in the drawing room a little later, a small group collected by the corner bay, remotest from Mrs. Bouverie Barton's own presidential chair, to hear Rudolph and Joyce compare experiences on the light above the barrow. When the two dreamers of dreams and seers of visions had finished, Mrs. Bruce, an esoteric Buddhist and hostess of Mahatmas, they often dropped in on her, it was said, quite informally for afternoon tea, opened the floodgates of her torrent speech with triumphant vehemence. This is just what I should have expected, she said, looking round for a sceptic, that she might turn and rend him. Novalis was right. Children are early men. They are freshest from the truth. They are freshest to us from the truth. Little souls just let loose from the free expanse of God's sky see more than we adults do, at least except a few of us. We ourselves, what are we but accumulated layers of phantasmata? Spirit light rarely breaks in upon our grimed charnel of flesh. The dust of years overlies us. But the child, bursting new upon the dim world of karma, trails clouds of glory from the beatific vision. So Wordsworth held, so the masters of Tibet taught us, long ages before Wordsworth. It's curious, Professor Spence put in, with a scientific smile, restrained at the corners, that all this should have happened to Joyce and to our friend Reeve at a long barrow. For you've seen McCritchie's last work, I suppose? No? Well, he's shown conclusively that long barrows, which are the graves of the small, squat people who preceded the inroad of Aryan invaders, are the real originals of all the fairy hills and subterranean palaces of popular legend. You know the old story of how Child Roland to the Dark Tower came, of course, Cameron? Well, that Dark Tower was nothing more or less than a long barrow, perhaps Pollinghurst Barrow itself, perhaps some other, and Child Roland went into it to rescue his sister, Bird Ellen, who had been stolen by the Fairy King, after the fashion of his kind, for a human sacrifice. The Picts, you recollect, were a deeply religious people who believed in human sacrifice. They felt they derived from it high spiritual benefit. And the queerest part of it all is that in order to see the fairies, you must go round the barrow, Widdershins, that is to say, Miss Quackenboss, as Cameron will explain to you, the opposite way from the way of the sun. On this very night of all the year, Michaelmas Eve, which was the accepted old date of the autumnal equinox. All long burrows have a chamber of great stones in the centre, I believe, Cameron suggested tentatively. Yes. All, or nearly all, megalithic, you know, unwrought, and that chambers the subterranean palace, lit up with the fairy light that's so constantly found in old stories of the dead, and which Joyce and you, alone among moderns, have been permitted to see, Reeve. It's a very odd fact, Dr. Porter, the materialist, interposed musingly, that the only ghosts people ever see are the ghosts of a generation very, very close to them. One hears of lots of ghosts in 18th century costumes, because everybody has a clear idea of wigs and small clothes from pictures and fancy dresses. One hears of far fewer in Elizabethan dress, because the class most given to beholding ghosts are seldom acquainted with ruffs and farthingales, and one meets with none at all in Anglo-Saxon or ancient British or Roman costumes, because those are only known to a comparatively small class of learned people, and ghosts as a rule avoid the learned, except you, Mrs. Bruce, as they would avoid Prusic acid. Millions of ghosts of remote antiquity must swarm about the world, though after a hundred years or thereabouts, they retire into obscurity and cease to annoy people with their nasty, cold shivers. But the queer thing about these long barrow ghosts is that they must be the spirits of men, and women, who died thousands and thousands of years ago, which is exceptional longevity for a spiritual being. Don't you think so, Cameron? 
Europe must be chock full of them, the pretty American assented, smiling, though America hasn't had time so far to collect any considerable population of spirits. But Mrs. Bruce was up in arms at once against such covert levity, and took the field in full force for her beloved spectres. No, no, she said, Dr. Porter, there you mistake your subject. You should read what I've written in the Mirror of Tresmegistus. Man is the focus of the glass of his own senses. There are other landscapes in the fifth and sixth dimensions of space than the one presented to him. As Carlyle said truly, each eye sees in all things just what each eye brings with it the power of seeing. And this is true spiritually as well as physically. To Newton, a Newton's dog Diamond, what a different universe. One saw the great vision of universal gravitation, the other saw a little mouse under a chair, as the wise old nursery rhyme so philosophically puts it. Nursery rhymes summarise for us the gain of centuries. Nothing was ever destroyed, nothing was ever changed, and nothing new is ever created. All the spirits of all that is, or was, or ever will be, people the universe everywhere, unseen around us, and each of us sees of them, those only he himself is adapted to seeing. The rustic, or the clown, meets no ghosts of any sort save the ghosts of the persons he knows about otherwise. If a man like yourself saw a ghost at all, which isn't likely, for you starve your spiritual side by blindly shutting your eyes to one whole aspect of nature, you'd be just as likely to see the ghost of a Stone Age chief as the ghost of a Georgian or Elizabethan exquisite. Did I catch the word ghost, Mrs. Bouvery Barton put in, coming up unexpectedly with her angry glower. Joyce, my child, go to bed. There is no talk for you. And don't go chilling yourself by standing at the window in your nightdress, looking out on the common to search for the light on the old long barrow, which is all pure moonshine. You nearly caught your death of cold last year with that nonsense. It's always so. These superstitions never do any good to anyone. And indeed, Rudolph felt a faint glow of shame himself at having discussed such themes in the hearing of that nervous and high-strung little creature. Thanks very much for listening. If you'd like to contact us or check out what we've been up to, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you enjoyed the video today, please do like it, subscribe to the channel and ding the bell to receive notifications about new videos. See you in the next one.